Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela, Angela Porter and you're almost welcome to come and join me with some drawing. Um, I'm carrying on doing things to go into my little accordion book. So I'm doing this with you rather than doing things on my own. So, so far I've done a cover for it. I have done a little pocket in here and I've started work on a tag to go in there which will stick out quite nicely. In fact, I could put more than one tag in there because there's enough space for it. But I do want to do something on the back. Now I could put words, I could put a quote, I could do all kinds of things, but today I am very much in the mood for some um, flowers or seed pods or both. So what I'm doing here, and I will just autofocus. Now I've moved the book out the way and um, I'm just going to draw on here some guidelines for margins from the edges and um, like so. Now I don't really want to go up here particularly. Well I could I guess but I think what I'll do is I can see where these lines are here. I just want to go a little bit further down than those, just so that it feels that this is kind of nestled in there. I think that'll do, because I always spill out the sides. It just means that it reminds me to leave that little bit of space around the edges. And I am going to use, let me have a look. I've got a pot of pens here. I have, I've actually tidied out, or put pots, pens into a pot so I can find them easily which is always a blessing in disguise when you're me. So I've got quite a small space to work in. I say quite small. Give me a second while I just move this down a little bit. So we're just that little bit close. I'll make you a bit seasick. Sorry about that. But um, it just gives me that space and you know, that closeness so you can see what I'm up to without me getting too um, overall, I think I'm going to start somewhere close to the bottom, about a third of the way up, and I'm going to draw in here a wibbly wobbly shape that will be a seed pod. I am going to put a wibbly wobbly aura inside. The wibble wobbles don't quite match up, and I'm quite okay with that to be honest. But what I am going to do is I'm going to split this up and I'm going to use an even number of lines if I can. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I've got big space here so I could put 21 and 22 there but I think I'll leave it like that. The reason for me using an even number of spaces is that if I choose to colour this in black and white or alternating colours I'm not going to end up with um, having to work out either to put the same colour next to each other twice or try and split a tiny box into a tinier box, two tiny boxes. So this way I've got an option. If I want to, I can always split this one and this one, but I think I'm okay as it is. And then inside, I want to put some seeds. And these seeds are just going to be kind of floating around in the middle. You know, like um, honesty. Um, I don't know if you know, I, I don't know what the other name is for it, but you get these flat seed pods that are very parchmenty, like very thin paper, and you can see the seeds are trapped inside them. It's that kind of idea, so I don't need to put any little, though they often have stems, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to have them just floating there, because I think that's quite nice. And I also think, because I like, now this is my particular tastes, doesn't mean you have to do this but I quite like putting an extra border around that I leave empty and it's just one colour. I just feel it helps to separate um, objects one from another. So if I've got one here, I can start to add some overlapping. So I can put that lovely border in there. Then I can put the smaller area in like that. 
then I can start to put some of my seeds in and then I can start to divide this up. This one doesn't matter too much whether I've got an even number or an odd number because part of the seed pod is hidden underneath so I'm just making lines to split that section up um, and I'm varying how wide, wide apart they are. So I'm going to go to here I've just realised I'm drawing seed pods and pod begins with P and my surname begins with P as well. Welcome to my weird world of coincidences. <laughs> kind of. It wasn't intentional. You could have pods and poppies and poppy pods. So I do like a poppy pod. So those are quite nice and I think I want, I may put a little cluster at the top there. Do I want to? No, I, I don't think so. I think I'll see how it goes. I think, because I said about poppies, I'm going to put a poppy in here. So, very stylized. So, I'm going to start with the central area. And in poppies, they kind of have, well, I always put it like a star shape, a six you know, an asterisk shape with blobs on the end of each line. And um, and I often like to put, you know me, I'm going to pop that in there. And then I'm going to start here with a fairly straight line. And come back. That's almost a wonky heart shape, actually, because that's how I tend to draw them. And yes, I've left a little gap between them have and then I'm going to do another pair of petals that go around that way and that's my that's one poppy so I can do another one same way two concentric circles an asterisk or that set of three lines that overlap to create a star shape and then we can do the inner petals and even though the center's bigger I'm going to make this flower that little bit smaller I think because who's to say that can't happen in nature so I've got that there and I think we'll have just one more here I'll really have the centre here tucked behind these. And just for variation, drew the blobs at the end first and then the lines. Yeah, I know. I'm sometimes very random about things. So, just asking how you're all doing. I hope you're all fine and well. I've been having a bit of a emotional kind of time lately but I'll be okay so um, I don't deal well with things changing very well and very much I'm not going to go into details it's nothing bad but I just don't like the feeling of change particularly and when things can throw me a curveball then it particularly um disturbs me some so I've been a, a bit emotional the last couple of days to say the least okay so here I did a leaf here and I'll show you how I did that so I'm going to start by doing almost like the zigzags going up but they're not straight sided they're sort of like curving out on either side so they're sort of like bulging a bit put the center line in and then these leaves I'm going to join the lines at the bottom of the zigzags back there and I get these cute little leaves sticking out. We'll do one here as well. I find it harder to do from the top down but I needed to do that in this case because I had a specific area I wanted the leaf to go in and sometimes it can be hard to get it to stick in. I've just realised I could have put the central line in and worked from there. 
doesn't always make sense what I do. <laughs> okay, so that's beginning to look quite interesting. So I think the next step will be some poppy pods. I love the shape of poppy seed, seed heads, seed pods, and they there's there are different ways of drawing them, different styles of them, different shapes. Even amongst the same flowers, you get slightly different shapes. You can see they're from the same particular species variety, but there's variations in them. So I'm going to draw ones that have the top here, they come out round, out and back in. There's a reason why I want this bit here. And then this is where the stem would come at the bottom. Well, my stem's hidden well behind the poppy heads. Then here at the top, I'm going to start with I'm going to pop a circle above there. It's not central and it doesn't have to be. It will work out no matter how you draw it. And then I'm just going to put petals around it as if I'm drawing a flower. Now I could have started from this and worked my way down and I most probably will on the next one. But underneath here, the reason I wanted to put this in is so I can put those little holes you get in poppy seed heads which are where the tiny little poppy seeds sort of get shaken out of. And then I can go with a line through them, like so. I missed at the bottom there. And just use that just to split the pod up like that into these sections. Top here, I'm drawing this outer line I'm doing an aura inside for it and then just putting that black area so it looks like that's got a hole in the middle of it as well. So I think I want to put shapes there. That's quite nice. Okay so we'll do another one next door and perhaps this one I will I'll start at the top and work my way down. So we've got the circle, done that bit inside, fill that in. Then I'll add my petals. You see the ones at the back are smaller and wider than the ones at the front, which are longer and bend downwards. Gives that feeling that this circle in the middle, this ring here, is higher than the others. This one, they stick up at the back a bit, almost like they've been blown upwards by the wind. So I'm going to do a different shape here because I can. Nobody says I can't. I certainly don't. So we'll have a circular pod here. I tend to like these kind of architectural, almost like um, columnar details that I put on the stems of seed pods and things. It just makes me smile. Okay, so I'm going to do this one a bit differently for these as well. So I'm going to just draw these up, draw this one up and there, and then I'm going to put my little openings in these sections. So rather than have them with the lines going through them, we'll do it slightly differently. But they're recognisable, it's both recognisable as poppy heads. Okay, so the next one, let's have a look. I do want a third one. And for this one, I'm definitely going to do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to start with that kind of shape, a long, thin, rounded rectangle or a pulled, thin, circle ellipse. And then on the top here is where I'm going to put My poppies, poppy, um, the um, like petal bits. I'm just going back and adding little lines into these. That little bit of ink that we're adding just adds that little bit of shadow here to the petals like that. And just sort of like almost suggests that they're tucked behind 
or, you know, folding over in some way. This one. Roundish, but it's more square than this one. I'd say I do like a poppy pod and I do like variations in them. And for this one, those little shaker holes, I'm going to put so they tuck under that top bar here like that. And then I'm going to draw lines which I'm deliberately making wobbly to show that they don't have to be perfectly smooth and straight. It doesn't matter too much. So we've got poppy seed heads there. I do want some leaves on these, but I don't have the space really to do ones like this, but I can have some smaller leaves just growing out like this, perhaps. Just to fill these spaces in just a little. And that one's going behind that big one. Okay, so I do need to add some details to these. My my poppy pod my poppy poppy flowers are looking a little bit bare compared to the rest. And I know that's no bad thing, but sometimes you just have to go and do something that will just help them to feel like they belong. That sense of belonging is so important to each and every one of us. It's a basic human need. Some of those things I've struggled with, I think, all my life is that feeling of belonging. I'm not looking for sympathy or anything, by the way. It's um, just one of those things. And uh, I think I've got the answer to it, but I'm not ready to share. If at all ever ready to share. I just need some more information and more insight, really. But I'll get there. Always do when I got my. Now that feels so much better instantly. It really does. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to use a finer pen. I've got no one out here. Got this one out ready. Is these leaves up here could do with some veins in them. Here on these just to give them that little bit of in interest and I so want to put some things in these sections but perhaps I'll do that once I've added some colour because yep we're going to add some colour. So that's my design so far. The one thing I do want to do, jot this tag would make a lovely bookmark for somebody. Which the hole punched at the top with some ribbon or something put in would be lovely. But it's going in my little accordion journal. And if you're going to use this journal as a journal for places to keep notes and things, then you could leave the back blank or put a piece of lined paper on there, glue it on or whatever, and it would work, you know? But I'm not doing that. Okay, let me just move move that out of the way. Pop that over there. Okay, I've got ink tense pencils and I've got a water brush and I have no can't even see my kitchen roll anywhere. Yeah, perhaps I've run out up here. It's highly likely. It's okay, I'll work. My hand my hand works well. So down here, these ones, I think I may actually let me have a look. This is a light olive ink tense pencil. And the one thing I do want to do before I do anything else is, no, I know I've got one in here, that'll do. I've got an eraser and I just want to make sure that I erase my pencil lines before I do anything else here. Because I'm not going to put a background on this, I don't think. I may, 
if I do that, I can always come back and redraw the lines. OK, so I'm going to use the light olive in these leaves. These, these ink tense pencils are quite magic. They um, they look incredibly dull when you put them down, but when you add water to them, they really become intense in colour. They show their true colours really nicely. And uh, in contrast to other watercolour pencils, when they dry, they dry permanent, which always makes me very happy. Okay, and I have here as well, I've got apple green here, so I can have a lighter green just at the tips of these. Now, I'm not going for realism here. I'm going for um, interest, a sense of pattern with the colour, a suggestion that perhaps the tips are that much lighter. I'll pop those back over there, stay. And I've got a water brush here. This one is a Zig or Kuritake Zig water brush. There are many different ones on the market. The other thing about ink tense pencils is a tiny little bit of colour goes an awful long way. Because they are intense. Hence ink tense. And ink, because they're permanent once they dry, is some roll off over there. But we'll chase those down in a moment. And when they're wet, you need you don't need a lot of water. There's hardly any water going on here. But they move really nicely and they blend really nicely as well. Now, I, obviously, I have ink tense pencils in my stash, but you can use whatever you desire to add colour. The principles of adding colour are the same, really. Here we go. It's just the different ways that these function and work. I like that. I like that duller green that the olive gives as well. Now I could go back and add some more colour to them and I may very well. But I know what colours I've used there so I'm alright for that. Okay, for the other leaves I think I might go with, I might actually go with the same colour because they are going to be of poppies. But perhaps instead of that light green, perhaps I'll start to add hints of yellow or orange there as if we've got autumn colours because I do love autumn. Perhaps yellow, perhaps a golden yellow. So hang on while I go hunting, my favourite yellowy colour. This is sienna gold which um, is my favourite yellowy colour in the whole lot of this, these. They need a different yellow. I'll have a look, I've got this one here, which is oh, I've got a cadmium yellow, that'll be quite nice because it's an orangey one as well. Now, hopefully, these will blend nicely with the olive. If they don't, oh well, I'll just use another colour to glaze over the top of them. They should be fine though. But I'm going to start here with the yellows and blend them down into the green, not the other way around. I want those yellow tips to show really. Actually they'll be alright. So. Yeah. Nearly done. Just with the leaves. Sometimes you know, like to start small, make that statement, and then think about the others. I think that's worked quite nicely. That gives a nice progression of colour as well. And I think those yellowy orangey tips will blend nicely with what I think I might do for these. Right, next thing, the poppies. So I've got poppy red here, so I'm going to put the poppy red in mostly over here. Now, as long as I don't scribble too hard, as in press the pencil in too hard. I don't have to be 
very fussy with how neat and tidy my colouring is. Another reason why I love watercolour pencils and um, so on. It's about getting colour down here and then using the water to spread it out so I'm not trying to blend particularly well. The colour will do this for me. Now the chances are I'm not going to do... Oh, I don't know, we'll see how we get on. Because the drawing didn't take that long, did it? So, and I want a darker colour then to go with this. I want hot red. What colour is that one? Chilli red might do it. Because I would like some chilli red. I think I want the darker red sort of around the centre bit here where there's going to be some shadow. This is quite an orangey red, so in other ones I may try a different red. Ultimately, it's there's variation in nature, so they don't have to be identical. And uh, trying different colours out, I'm still trying to get used to what colours are and what they can do. I've said it often enough, but um, digital colouring is my superpower more than any other traditional media. But I think if I'm starting to embrace the randomness of colours with the um, caricature-ish kinds of weird, monstery creatures that I've been creating and allowing the colour just to move as it will, then perhaps I'll end up feeling a lot better about some kind of traditional media. I know that I'm just never going to get a very smooth blend with colours, says she, who can already see a smooth blend here. Yeah, I know. They are. I could do with a lot more red here, but I think it's going to be okay. It'll be okay. I'm trying to work from light to dark, so I'm push, always pushing the extra colour back towards the darker areas. Um, I have overlapped here. There's nothing I can do about that because this will dry permanent. If it was um, like um, traditional watercolour pencils rather than ink tents, then you could certainly do your best to lift this up. This paper actually works really nicely. It's the Artway um, Coffee Flat, or it's... I know it's um, recycled coffee paper and I can't remember the name of it. It's, um, it actually works quite nicely with colours. Okay, so I do want more red, a, a more intense red there. But round these edges, I'm going to put... I'm, again, I'm using the poppy red just on the edge here. I'm putting quite a bit actually this time. So I do want a fair amount of colour, but I want to leave a lighter space, almost like it's catching the light here. So I'm not going to worry too much about these little bits that I didn't leave white because I knew I was going to come back with colour. So let's see how this works. Okay. There we go. So that's worked quite nicely. Okay, I'm not very happy with the chilli red. I know I want the Shiraz. Because there is a colour in here called Shiraz. And do you think I can find it? It's got to be here somewhere. I don't want vermilion. It's a weird colour that is. It's very orangey. Cherry. 
Shiraz. So for this I'm going to pick the colour up off the tip of the pencil because I can use it then a bit more like traditional watercolour. This doesn't damage the ink tents on the pencil. It will dry back to as it was and it will behave um, exactly the same way as a pencil. I just won't be using it to add colour to the paper directly until the tip of this pencil is completely dried. But that's better. That's a darker red. It's a nicer red to go in there. I like that. I have got some little white patches here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that either. Because, no, yeah, it'll be fine. So this is the one thing I love about ink tents is that once the colours have dried, you can glaze layer on the top, add colour, and the bottom layers just don't move. The traditional watercolours you can get movement quite a bit of, depending on how long you've left them, I, I guess, or how much they like to stick to the paper. I think the more expensive ones will stick a bit more, like the more expensive watercolours will. There we go. That's that's a bit better. It's still a bit, still not the right colour I was looking for, but it's not bad. Okay, the central bit is going to be very dark. And I could use black because that is the kind of colour, but I don't want to use to make it all black because that would be, well, I might just as well have put it all black. So I've put some black around the top part of this inner section here. And then I'm going to do some around here for me. So that actually works okay. If I need it darker, I can all, I know I can always go back in with it. So that's my guide for poppies. For these, I think I'm going to take this Shiraz and perhaps use that to colour these the seeds in. Again, I'm just going to do one of these so I've got it as a guide and give you a guide. And then while the video's uploading and doing what it's going to do. I'll finish off doing this. I quite like that because they look quite brownish, seedy-ish, but the colour ties in here. Inside here I do want um, a nice colour, interesting colour. Looking for one, I think, is it tan? Must, mustard might work. More of a yellow than tan. Tan. I'm not a big fan of browns generally. This mustard looks brown, but when you add water to it, it becomes brightly yellow. Oops, come back. It should become brightly orange, brightly yellow. Depends how far you spread it out. I agree. You've got that there, so that feels that these are the seeds are inside something or stuck inside there. And then I think I'm going to put mustard around the outside edge as well. So again, I'm going to do this, but in the same way I did the poppy, um, the outer borders on the poppy leaf petals, where I'm going to have a lot colour towards the bottom, but I'm going to leave lighter areas around the top as if there's light catching that upper edge which is always really lovely it's that variation in colour again it doesn't have to be believable I'm going to pick up some of the mustard and just use that just to add a bit more colour in places inside especially where it's a bit insipid because as it dries back it will dry back lighter in colour and again this is where you can go in and add more colour so I quite like that and then for these sections what I'm going to do there I'm going to bring back the olive and another green I think so I'm putting 
olive in the sections right next to the central bit and then I'm going to use water just to pull them out so it fades, fades down so start with the outer edge just bring a little bit of colour down and then push the rest of the colour back towards the centre so that's where it's darkest Do the same here and this one here this one Part of me wishes I'd used a different colour than this olive, but it is now what it is, and but it will add a coherence to the colour I use right the way across the whole design, because I'll bring the olive back into the seed pods, certainly to the stems, I would think. So I've got that going on there, which is actually quite nice. And then... I used a different green there, that lighter apple green, and I used the sienna gold there. I think I might be tempted to use this sienna gold because it is more of an orange colour than the mustard, so it will look different. But it will also look different to the olive. But again, it ties it back to where I've used colours before, which I always find a good plan. And colouring in a small um, drawing or any size drawing to use a limited colour palette. If you do it that way, then colours will work together and there'll be a feeling that they all belong, even though you know different variations on the colour theme will be used in different sections. So that actually looks quite nice. Okie dokes. Now I've got mustard here and I want to use the mustard on. A seed pod here. So I am going to do that and I'm going to put quite a lot of it at the bottom. I'm going to have some towards the middle but this is where I'm going to introduce one more colour. Because one of the things I love about poppy pods is that sometimes you get them this lovely sort of like dusty grey-ish brown colour with bits of almost like purple in there and I've got this colour which is red violet and I'm just going to put some streaks of it here and there no reason other than because I can just to add some interest in here now the trick here is to not have it overwhelming this mustard colour but just to bring that colour in to add some shadow and texture and variety in the tone. Again, if I need to, I can always come back and add more. It's very subtle here at the moment, so the chances are I am going to come back and add some more, particularly at the bottom, I think. It's funny, as I'm talking here, I'm getting weird flashbacks to a weird dream I had last night. I don't know what the dream was, but popping back into my head, it's got nothing to do with this. Okay, so this is this is a red violet, so it is going to tie in quite nicely, and I may actually use some of this colour. Perhaps on the poppy seed heads, not the poppy seed heads, and the poppy flowers. So that would be quite nice. Just to do that. So that just adds that kind of difference in colour here, but it also has that feeling that I'm adding some shadow with it, which is quite nice. I don't know what you think, how that's working. Okay, let me try this with, put some around the centre of the smaller petals here and see how this works with them. To say, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The worst that happens is that I'll have to cover this up. You know, put another sheet of paper or another drawing over the top of it, or just learn to live with it. Anyway, we've got some of that pur red purple colour coming in now, into there. Okay, so I do want to use the light olive again, and I'm going to use that. 
on the stems and I'm going to do all my stems here in the same kind of way because while I've got these out I can remember what I'm doing. I'll use that and I'm going to use the mustard as well. So I'm going to get the mustard e colour like so. Just going like that, which is lush. Gee, that works really nicely. I like that. I like the way the olive green is mixing with that mustard. It's really quite good. Might need to darken the leaves. I'm going to have to put some shadows in afterwards. Okay, at the top here, I've got choices. I could leave them, um, I could put them in red if I wanted to, but because they're part of a seed pod, I am going to use my mustard colour again. So I'm going to put the mustard right the way around the base of this and use the water just to spread the colour out towards the tips a little bit. But I also think I want to add some of this. I'll tell you what, I don't know why my to look at my desk here and see if I can level it up. I'm just going to put some of this colour around the centre there. And I also think I'm just going to use it to fill this little bit in here. Picked up one of my hair. What are you doing there? Where have you come from? I don't know. I just think that'll be quite nice there. And just that hint. And then the last thing I want to do is find is that black, the ink black. Because I am going to use ink black to just add the shadow into these sections. It won't be as dark as my ink. It'll be dark enough. And while I'm at it, so I won't need the, ink, the the black again. I may as well do the others as well. Because I'll I'll make it consistent here. Once it's dried I can add a bit more. Like I can here with this one. That works quite nicely. Just adding that extra bit of darkness there uh, just to help perhaps to bring out that structure just that little bit. That works quite nicely. And then I am going to pick some more of this ink up, ink black, and just get some darkness going at the top of each of these. Don't be afraid if you're using watercolour pencils or ink inktense pencils. Don't be afraid to use them like this. Think of them as watercolour pans in a pencil form almost. Not quite the same, but you get the idea. Just make sure that you let the tip dry unless you want to use it wet, because you can use them wet. You can dip them in water and paint with them that kind of way. But I tend to want to have a bit more control. So we can see that this is beginning to come to some kind of life here almost. Here I'm just going to add some of this um, red violet towards the edges here. Just to bring that back down to a little bit more brownie. Help it to stand out from the leaves a little bit as well. I'll do something to that. I do want to do something to those leaves. Um, okay, I've got the light olive again. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to really look at where I want that to be darkest and try to put use this colour to put quite some intense colour where there'd be some shadow perhaps. Just to help to lift these up or set them backwards, lift different elements up as it were. now that'll do. So I haven't finished this with you 
but I am going to finish it while, as I said, while the video is processing and doing what it needs to do. And once I've done that, I will scan it or take a photograph of it or whatever and pop it in the description section as well as across my social media. So I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this useful. And you may see once I've finished, I may put some little twiddly bits in. I don't think I'm going to do a background. I might. Certainly, I'm most probably going to do some drop shadows, but you'll, you'll be able to see how that works, no doubt, from the finished thing. It's to the left and bottom. It's always the same me, left and bottom. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. So have fun. I hope you're enjoying drawing along with me. And I'll see you again soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.